Guillain-Barr syndrome is an acute inflammatory polyneuropathy that affects the peripheral nervous system. It causes an acute, progressive, symmetrical, ascending flaccid weakness and can also cause sensory symptoms. It is a rare but potentially fatal autoimmune disorder. It may affect anyone but occurs more commonly in early adulthood and in the elderly. It is generally more common in males than females. Most cases of Guillain-Barr syndrome start within three weeks of an infection. It is usually triggered by an infection and is commonly associated with gastroenteritis caused by Campylobacter jejuni. It can also occur after an infection with cytomegalovis or Epstein-Barr virus or mycoplasma pneumonia infection. There have also been cases associated with COVID-19 and Zika virus. Pathophysiology of Guillain-Barr syndrome is thought to occur due to a process called molecular mimicry. This is where the B cells of the immune system create antibodies against the antigens on the pathogen that's causing the preceding infection. This means that if a person has gastroenteritis caused by Campylobacter jejuni, the B cells of the immune system create antibodies against the Campylobacter jejuni and these antibodies also match proteins on the nerve cells. These antibodies may target proteins on the myelin sheath of the motor nerve or on the nerve axon itself and this damage to the nerve cells because of these antibodies against the nerve cells create the neuropathy and the symptoms. Guillain-Barr syndrome presents with a progressive, symmetrical, ascending flaccid weakness which usually starts from the feet and moves up the body. There may be peripheral loss of sensation or neuropathic pain. There is reduced or absent reflexes because it is a peripheral neuropathy. It may progress to the cranial nerves resulting in a facial nerve weakness. Subtypes of Guillain-Barr syndrome include acute inflammatory demyelinating polyradiculoneuropathy, AIDP, acute motor and sensory axonal neuropathy, acute motor axonal neuropathy, acute sensory neuronopathy, Miller-Fisher syndrome, acute pandisautonomia. About 95% of cases of Guillain-Barr syndrome are AIDP. For the clinical course, symptoms usually start within four weeks of a preceding infection such as gastroenteritis. From the history the patient might have had a gastroenteritis four weeks previously. The symptoms usually start in the feet and progress upwards and reach maximum severity within two to four weeks and then there's a slow recovery period that can last months to years. Diagnosis of Guillain-Barr syndrome is usually made clinically. There's no specific test that confirms the definitive diagnosis. A criteria called the Brighton criteria can be used for a diagnosis and it can be supported by investigations such as nerve conduction studies which show reduced signal throughout the nerves, lumbar puncture to test the CSF. The CSF analysis classically shows elevated protein level with a normal cell count. Bloods can be taken to identify the underlying trigger. Bedside spirometry is done six hourly due to the potential for rapid progression and involvement of the respiratory muscles. Treatment of Guillain-Barr syndrome involves a combination of disease-modifying therapy, supportive care, and preventing and managing complications. Disease-modifying therapy involves the use of intravenous immunoglobulins or plasma exchange to remove those antibodies from the blood. Supportive care includes monitoring of breathing, heartbeat and blood pressure. Importantly deep vein thrombosis prophylaxis is given to prevent them from developing blood clots due to immobility. Pain relief is required for neuropathic pain. It is recommended to have passive joint movement from the onset. In very severe cases respiratory failure is a complication that can occur, and the patient may need intubation and mechanical ventilation and admission to the intensive care unit. About 80% of people will recover fully. Neurological problems persist in up to 20% of people and half of these people are severely disabled. The mortality rate is estimated to be 3 to 10%. Death tends to be due to respiratory failure, pulmonary emboli, or infection. Thank you for watching. Please like this video, leave a comment if you have any questions and subscribe for more informative videos on medical topics.